Camel Model Senior Secondary School. Art Integration Project, Mother's Day 11C. Made by Horshit Saini. Ishane Nagar. Mrs. Pearson, how do you make your importance felt in the house? Is up to you try what I am telling you to do. It could be a good for you or it could be a bad one. It all depends on you. Yes. Thank you, Mrs. Fitzgerald. Listen to me, Mrs. Pearson. Put your foot down once and for all, and be the mistress of the of your own house and the boss of your family. I am so fond of my husband and children, even if they are so thoughtless and selfish, they don't mean to be. Maybe not, but it would be better for them to learn to treat you properly. Yes, I suppose it would, in a way. You run after them all the time. Take their order as if you are the servant of this house, stay at home every night, while they go out and enjoy themselves, husbands, sons, daughters, should be taking notice of their wives and mothers, not giving them orders and treating them like servant. I suppose you are right. Oh, goodness gracious, look at the time nothing ready and my husband and children will be home any time. Let them wait, or look after themselves for once, this is where your foot goes down, start now. Mrs. Fitzgerald, I know you mean well, in fact I agree with you. But I just can't. Then let me do it. But, I don't understand, you couldn't be me. Let me show it to you dear. Arshtata dum arshtata lam arshtata lam dumbona. Now they both had changed their soul. See what I mean dear. Mrs. Fitzgerald, now with Mrs. Pearson's personality. Oh, it's happened. Of course it's happened. Mrs. Fitzgerald, George and children can't see me like this. They are not going to. They have me to deal with. But what if we can't change back? It would be terrible. Oh, stop worrying. It's easier changing back. But, what I'm going to do now? Go into my house for some time and enjoy the TV show. Mrs. Fitzgerald crosses and hurries out the door. Mrs. Pearson walking in the room and doing modeling. After a few moments Doris Pearson comes bursting. She is a pretty girl in her early 20s who would be pleasant enough if she had not been spoilt. Mum, you will have to iron my yellow silk. I must wear it tonight. What are you doing? What do you think I am doing? Whitewashing the ceiling. But you are doing modeling. That's right, dear. No law against it. Is there? Or we have tea in the kitchen. Have it where you like, dear. Do you mean it isn't ready? Yours isn't. I've had all I want. Mum, what's the matter with you? After some time, Cyril Pearson enters. He is the masculine counterpart of Doris. Mom, tea ready? No. Why not? I couldn't bother. Feeling off color, or something? Never felt better, in my life. What's the idea then? Just a change. Well, snap out of it ma, and get cracking. Haven't too much time. I have plenty of time. I don't get this mom, what's going? Changes. Doris enters. She is in the process of dressing. She looked plain and red-eyed. You look terrible. If I do look terrible, it's your fault. You made me cry. Mrs. Pearson exits. Instantly Cyril and Doris are in a huddle, close together, rapidly whispering. Why? What did she do? Never you mind. Has she been like that with you, too? Yes. No tea ready. Couldn't care less. Well, I'm glad it's both of us. I thought I'd done something wrong. So did I. But it's her, of course. Well, she's suddenly all different. Let's try talking to her. Mom. What's making you talk like this? What have we done? Nothing. You con in, ask for something, go out and then come back when there is nowhere else to go. I just don't like it. Look, I have been working all day. Same here. Eight hours a day. Yes, eight hours a day. And don't forget it. But I had done my eight hours. That's different, mom. It was. Now it isn't. I think I have to manage myself. I must grab something to eat. Looks as if I will need to keep my strength up. Did you fall, or hit yourself, with something? No, but I'll hit you with something girl, if you don't stop asking silly questions. Oh, this is awful. Stop, blubbering, you're not a baby, now stop it. George Pearson enters. He is about 50, fundamentally decent but solemn, self, important, pompous. Preferably he should be a heavy, slow-moving type. He noticed Doris's tears. Hello, what's this? Can't be anything to cry about. You'll see. Doris runs out. George stares after her a moment, then looks at Mrs. Pearson. 
Did she say? You'll see. Yes. What did she mean? Better you ask her. George looks slowly at Mrs. Pearson. Then he noticed that Mrs. Pearson is wearing a short dress and doing modeling. Modeling? Yes. But why are you doing modeling for? Because I fancied some. At this time of the day. Yes. What's wrong with it, at this time of the day? Nothing, I suppose, Annie. But I've never seen you do it before. Well, you're seeing me now. Yes, and I don't like it. It doesn't look right. I am surprised at you. It must be some time since you were surprised at me, George. I don't like surprises. I am all for a study going on. You ought to know that by this time. By the way, I forgot to tell you this morning I wouldn't want any tea. Special snooker match night at the club tonight, and a bit of supper going. So no tea. That's all right. There isn't any. You mean you didn't get any ready? Yes. And a good thing, too, as it's turning out. That's all very well, but suppose I do wanted some. My goodness. Listen to the man. Annoyed because I don't get a tea for him, that he doesn't even want. Ever tried that at the club? They'd laugh at you, even more than they do now. Laugh at me? They don't laugh at me. Of course they do. They call you Pompey, Ompey, Pearson, because they think you are slow and pompous. Never. Cyril enters. George, almost dazed, turns to him appealingly. Here, Cyril, you have been with me to the club once or twice. They don't laugh at me and call me Pompey, Ompey Pearson, do they? Well, yes, Dad, I'm afraid they do. George exits, slowly, almost as if somebody had hit him over the head. Cyril, after watching him go, turns indignantly to Mrs. Pearson. Mom, you shouldn't have told him, that's not fair. You have hurt his feeling and mine too. Oh, that's all right. Sometimes it does feel good to have their feeling hurt. If your father will go to the club, so often perhaps they will start laughing at him. I doubt it. Might be for me, I'll see. Cyril hurries out. In a moment he re-enters, closing the door behind him. It's that silly old bag from next door, Mrs. Fitzgerald. You don't want her here, do you? Certainly I do. Ask her in, and don't call her a silly old bag either. She's a very nice woman, with a lot of sense than you'll ever have. Cyril exits. Mrs. Fitzgerald enters. Come in, come in, Mrs. Fitzgerald. Oh, dear, what's happening? Nothing much. Just putting them in their places. That's all. Is George home? Yes. I'd be telling him what did they think him at the club. Oh, dear. I wish you hadn't. George enters. Then he looks from Mrs. Pearson to Mrs. Fitzgerald, who is regarding him anxiously. Just looked in for a minute, I suppose, Mrs. Fitzgerald. Well, yes, I suppose so, George. George. Oh, I am sorry. What does it matter? Your name's George, isn't it? Why don't you go to the club special night tonight? They would be laugh at you. No tea. Pompey, Ompey Pearson, and poor Doris has been crying her eyes out upstairs. Oh, dear I ought to have no. You ought to have no. Why ought you to have no? Nothing to do with you, Mrs. Fitzgerald. George Pearson, next time a friend and neighbor comes to see me, just say something. When you see her, good evening, or how do you do? or something, and don't just march in and sit down without a word. It's bad manners. Well have some decent manners in this house. What's the matter with you? Have you gone barmy, or what? If you shout at me again like that, George Pearson, I'll slap your big, fat, silly face. All right, all right, all right. Doris enters slowly. Hello Doris dear. Hello, Mrs. Fitzgerald. I thought you were going out for party. What's that to do with you? Stop that. No, it's all right. It isn't all right. I won't have a daughter of mine talking to anybody like that. Now answer Mrs. Fitzgerald properly, Doris, or go upstairs again. Well, answer her. I was going out for the party tonight, but now I've called it off. Yes, yes. Now it's good. Now listen, you two. I want to have a private little talk with Mrs. Pearson, so I'll be obliged if you will leave us alone for a few minutes. I'll let you know when we finished. Go on, please. I promise you that you won't regret it. There's something here that only I can deal with. I am glad somebody can cause I can't. Come on, Doris. George and Doris exit. She eagerly beckons Mrs. Pearson to do the same thing. 
Mrs. Fitzgerald, we must change back now. We really must. Because this has gone far enough. We must change back. Hurry up, please, Mrs. Fitzgerald. Well, if you insist. Yes, I do. Please, please. Okay, okay, Mrs. Pearson. Quick now, relax. Arshdata dum, arshdata lam, arshdata lam dumbona. They carried out the same action as before, going lax and then coming to life. But this type of course they become their proper personalities. Ah well I enjoyed that. I didn't. Well, you ought to have done. Now listen Mrs. Pearson. Don't go soft on, em again, else it'll all have been wasted. I'll try not to, Mrs. Fitzgerald. Hoy, you can come in now. George, Doris and Cyril file in through the doorway looking apprehensively at Mrs. Pearson. I'm just off, to let you enjoy yourself. The family looks anxiously at Mrs. Pearson, who smiles. Much relieved, they smile back at her. Yes, mother, seeing that you don't want to go out, I tell you what I thought we'd do. No objections, I hope. No mother, whatever you say. I thought we'd have a nice family game of rummy, and then you children could get the supper ready while I have a talk with your father. Suits me. What about you two? Yes, that's all right. Well, I... What? Speak up. Oh, I think it would be lovely. Good. Bye, Mrs. Fitzgerald. Come again soon. Yes, dear. Night all. Have a nice time. Mrs. Fitzgerald exits and the family cluster around mother. Thank you for watching.